Hi, my name is Vanessa Leck, and today's video slash podcast are going to be about a few important topics to include, but not limited to, preventing fraud against military veterans in the U.S., which is rampant. There's a document right here, actually, where I'm going to be going over these things and discussing them. It actually came out from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, which is surprising as you know, I'm critical of many things they put out, and today will be no exception. I also will be going over over um, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs email newsletters that are sent out to veterans. They're actually worthwhile. I'll be talking about that, and I'll be talking about something I'm going to be very critical of that I found in that newsletter, and I'll be going over that today. In the meantime, you can find Hello Vanessa Media, which is basically my online content um, on YouTube, Rumble, all podcasting platforms throughout America and probably beyond. And also on LinkedIn, I'm on there as well. So if you're on there, hello. You can check it out here. So these are the places you can find me, um, the information that I have. All right. So Moving onward, so this document was actually a piece of paper I got in the mail that I scanned in or took a picture on my phone, that's why it's not the best, and decided to share it because it's really important information. Um, the fact of the matter is that all the time we have people being scammed out of their money and scammers and spammers doing all kinds of awful things to people for no good reason except, well, they can. And um, the military community have been targeted in America quite a bit for spammers and scammers as well. I can't tell you how much questionable mail I've gotten just from being targeted for what I believe to be different scams. And there is all kinds of things with that. So this is probably the only piece of mail, one of the only pieces of mail I've gotten from the VA in recent history um, that I actually appreciated. And so this is all about how to prevent fraud. And so I'll go over some of it. Um, it says like, if you receive, it's really good tips and information. If you receive correspondence from VA, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs concerning um, basically your benefits and you don't remember filing for benefits or anything about that, contact the 1-800-827-1000 number. Um, Basically, if you receive unsolicited correspondence from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, it basically says to contact the VA, the relevant department, at the VA directly to see if it's really them or if it's a scammer. Um, it says that the VA, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, may check in with you by phone, email, or text message, but will never ask for personal information via email, and that this includes verification of your social security number, address, and or bank information. If you're unsure about any call, email, or text, confirm details directly with the VA, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And really, that's not just a tip for the VA. It's really a tip for anywhere. I mean, I've gotten legitimate calls from my financial institution in the past, and I like, thought it would have been fraud, and it wasn't. It was actually them. But whatever the case, I don't think you can ever be too careful in this world because even the most careful people have bad outcomes, unfortunately, with scammers. Um, it also says the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs does not threaten um, veterans with, that are trying to see, seek benefits with jail or lawsuits. So beware of that. There are a lot of scammers and spammers out there that are threatening things like um, jail and lawsuits and just really wild stuff. I actually received a voicemail a number of years ago within the last few years from a scammer person that was trying to um, get me to give them money. They left a voicemail saying I owed a government entity $1 million. <laughs> and they did threaten, I think, incarceration, if I remember correctly, in my voicemail. So that was obviously a scam. Be cautious of telephone numbers and caller ID. Scammers may change a telephone number known as spoofing. This is also something um, that goes on with email as well, where this, I don't understand all the details of it, but I've been seeing and hearing more about it as of late. So to make a call appear or email um, to come from a different person or place, when in doubt, hang up and basically call whoever it is directly or call the person's representing you. And they give example, power of attorney, representative, your lawyer, your veteran service organization, or whoever is trying to help you that is authorized to do so and that you have been working with. Um, it says don't basically ignore legitimate correspondence from the VA. Um, use basically it goes over basic security things about passwords and two-factor identification 
and so on and so forth. It is a very, actually really good tip. So all these are very legitimate things with regard to military community. And then also some of it can be applied universally to like anyone in America. So very important stuff. Um, basically setting up fraud alerts, monitoring your accounts, reporting unauthorized transactions. And then they have um, information about the OIG Office of Inspector General. They have the website va.gov backslash OIG backslash hotline backslash default.asp. Um, they have another good resource about how to avoid scams. And it's basically, um, I forget what the acronym stands for. It's FCC. So I'm not going to even try to mess this up, but FCC.gov backslash veterans dash targeted dash benefits dash scams. So that would be another great website to go to, to check on how to prevent fraud against yourself or your family member who may be a military veteran. For more benefits, for more details on how to avoid scam, okay, got that one. Um, download the free financial scam awareness resources. Um, they have a consumerfinance.gov website. It's very detailed. You may be able to see it here on the screen so you can get all of that website there. And then also um, there's another one, Federal Trade Commission website has information about fraud and scams as well. And that's the website. So I think there's just a really helpful resources that they gave. I actually went over all of it. I saved it. I actually have it right here. It's just filled with just coffee though. <laughs> coffee and water stains. Cause that's what I drink. <laughs> this little piece of vapor. It's actually bleeding through the other side right now. Um, but yeah, I actually saved it because it's worthwhile information. You know, it seems like I'm literally every single year having to become more and more and more and more and more proactive with um, security measures and prevention because there's just more and more and more scammers, spammers, and criminals out there trying to run scams on people. All right, so I'm going to go over this U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs um, email basically system thing they got going on. And let me see if I can, how I can do this a little bit better. All right. Nope. Not what I wanted. All right. So this right here is, I'm going to see if I can kind of change the way the screen looks. There you go. Let me see if that does it. All right. Yeah, that works better. All right. So what I'm showing you now is Basically, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs email newsletter subscription. So this appears, and I don't work at the VA anymore. I haven't for many, many, many years, and I never worked in their marketing department at all. Um, and so what I'm saying is really speculative about what I'm about to say, just to be clear. So I'm assuming that this email is coming out from the national propaganda machine that is U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs at the top level. Um to basically the propaganda to make it seem like everything's gravy, everything's great, nothing to see here, where we love the veterans, we're taking care of veterans. Of course, we know if anyone that knows anything knows that's pretty highly questionable at times, as well as how they treat some of their employees. Okay. But I will say, as critical as I am of the VN, rightfully so, I have found the newsletter to be really good. Um, the email newsletter, it has a lot of random information that is actually useful. Um, and so I actually do review every email I get from the VA's newsletter. And I've found most of them to have helpful information content um, for either myself or a veteran I know. So, you know, I'm very much in the military community, very embedded in it. And so um, these resources really speak to the military community and they actually are worthwhile to my surprise. And so I always find myself reviewing the newsletter and reading portions of it. So as you can see, they have information about Afghanistan resources, specifically they're talking about mental health stuff. So they have a, like a whole bunch of like mental health resources they've been pushing out recently and I will actually go over that in a minute because I just know the VHA, I don't trust them, Veterans Health Administration. I'm, as you may already know, if you're following along, am working my own situation to basically not have to deal with the VHA anymore. I have met with some success thus far. I'm anticipating pushback from the VHA 
um, on trying to outsource the rest of my healthcare out of their facilities for good um, because they really are there to serve the VA politics and the VA bureaucracy and to make sure the staff keeping their compensation. Um, they're not, this is a glorified employment machine, the VHA is. It is not a veteran's health system with first rate care. I mean, some of the people who work there are exceptional. Some of the healthcare providers who work there are exceptional, but that is not the majority is the conclusion I've come to specifically in VHA Louisiana, but I've also seen this tendency elsewhere, okay? Because I used to work for the organization in a couple of different regions, and I never saw a good situation going on in the VHA. Um, and I could go on a rant about that, but I'm going to just try to slow myself down and not go there. Anyways, but... Um, I have successfully outsourced part of my healthcare out of the VHA so far. That is moving along very nicely. Um, I'm expecting resistance, though, to the rest of my efforts to do that. But I've made the decision at this point that I will not be returning to Veterans Health Administration VHA for my healthcare ever again. And I'm going to do all that I can to utilize um, services outside the VA. BHA, I should say, Veterans Health Administration for healthcare, because I have seen enough to know that I don't trust these people. All right, I'm going to go over mental health resources, though, after this. To be clear, this does not establish a clinical relationship whatsoever. This is not for a crisis or emergency. If you are in crisis, please call 911. Um, if you need a professional service provider, please find one in your area. Thank you. But I will be going over mental health resources at the end of this that, are, that I really have faith in, because... I don't have faith in the VHA after dealing with them. All right. So as you can see, these are topics covered um, in information. And then it has some events listed and some stuff about hiring and some stuff about, you know, another department of the government and um, has some more information here, as you can see. Yeah, they got their own podcast, Propaganda at its Finest. Anyways, and then they have stuff at the very, very end here, okay? So what I thought was interesting was how they buried something pretty important right here, as you'll see a very small print. And it talks about military sexual trauma survivors, MST. So now I'm going to go ahead and switch screens and show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this over here, moving my screens around, get things moved over. Okay. So this is the article that was linked to in the email that I was showing you just now. And as you can see, the title says military sexual trauma survivors see increased claim grants. Okay. So basically what this is about is it's obviously about sexual harassment and assault that happens in the U S military and there's survivors of that that are eligible for benefits. Okay. Now of different kinds. And then it goes into all this information. So I have no problem with the bulk of the e article and the email that was listed. I think it should have been listed more in a more visible place. But hey, that's neither here nor there. That's my opinion. Um, others may disagree due to world events about that. I don't know. Um, but I think it should have been listed in a higher, more visible location in the e email. Well, anyways. So the e the e article. Article basically talks about sexual harassment and sexual assault in the military, in the U.S. military, and it talks about how they're basically prioritizing these claims and they're having a center. They mentioned they're relocating um, to a New York regional office in the first quarter of FY fiscal year 2022, as you can see right here. And the purpose of that is to have more oversight and this essentially accountability. Actually, the word accountability says right there tighter control and accountability for MST claim decisions. I have no problem with any of that. Everything was fine up until I saw something here, which has been bothering me all day long. It's not the first time I have been bothered in, by statements made like this from people in the world, in America, people with voices online, people that are pretty visible, 
um, to a lot of people. So okay. So this is right here. This is the whole section I have, have an issue with. And I'll actually try to scroll down some more so people can see that. Um, okay. So this is the excerpt that I'm going to respond to. This is especially true for veterans who have experienced MST because so many sexual assaults are not reported when they happen. Processing claims for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, related to sexual trauma is particularly challenging because of the personal and sensitive nature of the MST stressors. And it is often difficult for the veteran to report or document the event when it occurs. As a result, evidence is often unavailable. Um, basically, this is a half truth and a half false statement. I believe that the statement is being made by either an incompetent or a per person at the VA that's writing this or a person that is just a liar and who wants to engage in a cover-up of the cover-up and is being directed to do so by VA leadership. And that would not surprise me one bit. So the reality is that, yes, while some people do not support, do not um, report military sexual trauma, sexual assault, sexual harassment, or even a physical assault or other types of uh, violence that they've experienced in the military um, for a variety of factors, it is true, and they, don't, they did not mention this, that many people, many, many, many people have reported this have reported the sexual harassment, have reported the sexual assaults, have reported their own physical assaults, have reported um, different types of abuses, workplace violence, workplace abuse. I've done videos and podcasts galore on that. Go look them up if you don't know what I'm talking about. I think I even have a playlist on YouTube about that, okay? So there are many, 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 many people who have reported this. I did a video and podcast on that topic as well. And the reason that there's no documentation of these incidences isn't because 100% of people failed to report. It's because when the information of the assaults were reported, they were buried. They were covered up. No documentation intentionally was created to protect most likely the leadership that was over and, and involved with the people that committed these offenses, crimes, assaults, et cetera, whatever, okay? And so when that happens, there's not going to be a paper trail. There's not going to be any evidence that's ever going to be available. And likely, you know, many of the people that are experiencing um, violence in the military are going to be junior enlisted service members. Not all, of course. I know the officers have as well. I'm fully aware of this. But I know that many of them are junior enlisted service members, who, which means they have very low rank and power and status and they get very little experience in the military, and thus they're not going to know what the appropriate protocol is for that type of situation and what the follow-up is supposed to look like because they have no life experience with any of that. Thus, they don't even know a cover-up's happening when it's happening. They may not know till many years later that, oh, guess what? There's no record of this, so it must not have happened. You must not have reported it when, in fact, that's false, Okay. And so the fact, there's no way that the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs doesn't know this. There is no freaking way. So I just want to make sure that with all the false information and propaganda being put out there in the world about so many topics that I that matter to me, but this is one of them, um, and that matter to a lot of people, that the, the voice of truth is actually coming out. And the truth is there are many survivors of violence that are reporting it historically and that have been ignored, the evidence, the reports have been buried, and that no paper trail was intentionally created um, in order to cover it up. And so this entire paragraph should really be redacted by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and corrected to include those facts because they are facts. And I think that the reason that this is being put in is because they want to pretend like no one's been reporting this so that they can pretend like, well, we didn't, the, you know, no one knew, so no one could do anything about it. Also, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs does not have a perfect track record themselves, far from it. Not that any organization's perfect, I know this, but I am very familiar with VHA, Veterans Health Administration, which I used to work for many years ago. They have a track record of allowing civil rights violations to happen in their own facilities, which include sexual harassment and worse, okay, with their own staff. 
So if you don't believe me, you can Google it. This information is public. I don't have to make it up. You can Google it and find it out online. So this organization is pretty big on cover-ups. This I know for sure, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. So it should come as no surprise to me that they would put out these misleading statements online about MST. Okay, so that's what I have to say about that. Now, I'm also going to look up some other information that I want to share. I'm going to share that right now. I'm looking up all the different resources. I'm going to quickly click through. It's been on my mind. Really haven't had time. Um, but I have decided I'm going to make some time and share along. So here we go. I have several screen shares I'm about to do. <sighs> okay. Okay, so um, I don't have much faith in the VHA, as you know, Veterans Health Administration, very little at all, even though I know excellent people do work there, and I will never deny that. Um, it's a fact. But there are many people that are not excellent that also work there. And so I think it's really important that people understand that there are many places potentially to go for mental health care outside of just the VHA, if you're not comfortable with going there, like myself, I'm not comfortable with going to the Veterans Health Administration. All right, so Brightside is one of the many places online that I have stumbled upon where people are actually able to get um, mental health assistance online. And as you can see, they're advertising many things here. Uh, just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video at all. These are just some resources I'm putting out there for people, okay? Anyways, it says, you know, expert care to overcome your, and then it has a, something flipping through saying social anxiety, panic, um, insomnia. I saw one that said OCD. This one says PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, OCDs, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, depression, all this kind of stuff. It says get a personalized treatment plan online and start feeling like you, again, with medication, therapy, or both. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, I do know that this particular one checks in on people with online tools um, every week if they choose to check in and that there is access to uh, licensed healthcare providers that can help with things like mental health medication management. Um, and so this is definitely a resource. I have noticed at the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Veterans Health Administration, VHA, that I had issues I've had issues with a few other departments. I've had issues just basically with people even getting back to me at all, despite the fact that that was their job. And so anyways, there's other options out there. So this is kind of going through, you know, kind of their, their marketing spiel here about how it works and what that looks like and, you know, what to expect. And it's obviously a very mobile friendly type um, environment, digital environment. It's obviously got, you know, a lot of resources, um, involved for people to support their mental health and it has the prices and whatnot. Some of these online things do accept insurance and some do not. I can't remember with this. It does say it's HSA, FSA eligible. I would wish an HSA health savings account slash FSA flex savings account is I think what it stands for. Oh my gosh, like those cards are so cool in my opinion. I know a number of civilians are able to get those cards from their companies and use them for their healthcare expenses. And there's some different benefits to them. And it's a little kind of complicated. So I don't know all the ins and outs, but I do know I see this constantly right here where more and more prescriptions and medical care and places are accepting HSA, FSA cards. Even I, as a licensed healthcare provider, am able to accept it. It has that like, logo on it for the credit card logo because it's really just like a debit card. It's basically for healthcare. And there's a lot, it's a lot more complicated than just that. I know I'm not an expert in HSA, FSA cards, but the concept's really cool. And I wish I could have all, I wish I could have an HSA, 
HSA, FSA card instead of having to deal with the VHA ever because I would have a lot more flexibility where I got my care. Um, that's for sure. And so I would actually settle for that at this point. Um, but I do like to just have the money they're wasting all the people give me a run around at the VHA. All right. Thousands of Brightside members are overcoming their anxiety and depression, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, this, these are not my awards. This is the company. So anyways, um, but this is just one of the options I'm just talking about. And that's why I'm showing it is really just an educational, um, tool resource for mental health. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show another one, another online provider that's offering mental health, um, assistance. And this is brand new. I just saw this. So like, to me, it's brand new. Like I don't know, you know, how long it's been a thing, but I thought this was new. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys. And the reason I feel so strongly to share all of this is just because, you know, there's a lot of people, I know I'm not the, I know that it's important that people know that there's other options out there aside from Veterans Health Administration, VHA, if they're looking for out of the box types options. And, um, you know, of course, VHA is is out there and some of you may think it's a great thing. And if that's works for you, then yay for you. I'm really happy for you. Um, so anyways, so this is Rory. Hello, Rory.com backslash RO dash mind. If I get to, I will try to put the links to these um, in the description. I can't promise that honestly, I've just been really busy anyways, but it, this is it. Row mind is what they're calling it. Um, it says if you're feeling up to it today, complete an online assessment for anxiety and depression, then connect with a healthcare provider. Row mind offers customized treatment plans, which include prescription medicine, medication, if appropriate and provider check-ins, as well as self-guided virtual sessions. So one of the interesting things about this is that obviously, you know, this is like their advertisement picture right there. Um, with a medication bottle and a pouch to hold it in. But one of the interesting things about it is they're basically trying to say that, you know, they have like content that is about mental health support, um, you know, about coping skills. And this is it right here, actually. And like, they're saying like they have different medical providers that do videos. So this one's like beating burnout, building the balance on uh, virtual stuff. And this is another doctor. You may recognize him. I do from TV. Um, this is another person about to talk about boundaries. So um, then it says like explore topics that matter to you with virtual sessions, you know, anyway, so it has all that kind of stuff. And basically the fee, according to this, is supposed to include like those educational resources along with the mental health care is what my understanding of it was. This is very unique. I've never seen anything like it before. I love cutting edge healthcare. And that is how I see this. I see the stuff I'm showing you all as cutting edge healthcare. That like this, in my opinion, is the future. This is the future. Mobile, on the go, accessible, more affordable, um, less pretentious, not elitist to more people. And that would include the military veteran community as far as I'm concerned. All right. So it has frequently asked questions. You can check out here and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. Now I'm going to show you another one um, that I think is also interesting. Um, okay. Okay. So this is Senvelo. It operates in an app. Um, I'll tell you the thing I find the most interesting about this. Being someone who, you know, works in behavioral healthcare for many years now I have, um, I'm always kind of keeping an eye out for what's like new and happening in healthcare, specifically behavioral healthcare. And so one of the things I find most interesting and intriguing about this is the um, group coaching sessions that they have that are online that are anonymous. And let's see, what does this one say? Okay, it froze on me. Okay, so I can't get the video to work. But anyways, um, it has 
group sessions, basically, that, oh, there it is. Sanvelo Live real-time classes, that's what they're called, join live council, ugh. join live classes anonymously with Sanvelo coaches to learn how to apply Sanvelo techniques to real life. And basically they talk about mental health stuff, open conversation and like the app. Coaches personalize concepts and tools with stories and real world examples and will ask for your real time participation through emoji reactions and chat messages. So if you're super familiar with YouTube lives, um, you know, like what I'm doing right now <laughs> and, you know, on YouTube lives, you like put like, you know, emojis or comments or whatever, ask questions. It is a very similar concept in my opinion. That's what I think of when I see this situation. And it seems kind of like, like it's different. It's different, but that's why I like it. It's different. And I believe that this is going to be, this is the future. And um, I'm excited about it to be completely honest with you. I think this is incredible. And, um, far more accessible than many other options. Okay. So they also have advertised um, therapy here. It, so you have to keep in mind all the things I'm showing you are not available in all states. So, you know, these com companies are up and coming and from what I can tell. And so not all of them accept health insurance, not in, in may never. Um, but in some cases it, that may not matter to some people depending upon their situation. Um, this is a map. And it looks like right here that this may be showing, I'm not even sure why. Okay. It says Sinvola therapy is continuing to roll out nationwide. See our current live states um, blow and find important information that may apply to teletherapy in your state here. So that's kind of proving my point right now is like, as I'm looking at this whole chart, like there is literally like a lot of gray and it's just, Yeah. So basically all of these online services, some of the services they offer are not going to be available in all of the U S states because they're still up and coming because there's, this is a heavily regulated field. Um, and there's a lot of barriers to people, to companies, even being able to offer these services to begin with. So, so this is something you're really going to have to look into. All right. So done with that. Um, now I'm going to show you a couple of different things here and see what I can find. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Here we go. So, um, let's see. Teletherapy. Um, Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So some of the resources I want to share that I think are worthwhile are basically like therapist search engines. This is psychologytoday.com. Um, it's an extremely popular one. A lot of licensed behavioral health clinicians are on there. And you basically can put in your zip code, um, city, or whatnot, or if you know the name of the therapist, whatever the case, to find it. And they have a list of different options, therapists, teletherapy, psychiatrists, treatment centers, and support groups. So you can do a search. And then what's interesting about it is you can actually scroll and click a lot of different options on there. So if you need to use insurance, you can click use insurance. If you need to um, get a certain type of service or you're looking for a certain thing, you know, you can click around basically and find what you're looking for potentially in your area. Um, this is very popular listing service that licensed clinicians and treatment centers pay to be a part of. I am not on there just to let you know, <laughs> just so I will not show up on here <laughs> just to be clear. Um, and then that is not the only one. I'm actually going to see how this one is. Make sure it's still on boarded. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So I found another one I'm going to share real quick. Um, it is another search listing service type thing um, that where a person could find a counselor or a therapist and whatnot. All right. So here you go. Here's another one. Let me get rid of that little banner there. Um, so this one is called Good Therapy. 
and it is um, basically for people that are needing to find a therapist or a counselor and it says find therapist, telehealth, facility, event, search a blog. Um, oh my goodness. It's like not showing you guys that. Okay. So anyways, it says find a therapist. You click down that drop down menu right here that I'm circling with my mouse. And then it says find a therapist, find when you drop down, find telehealth, find a facility, find an event, search blog. Okay. And then you basically put in right here your zip or city, and then you click the search and then and then, ta -da! and then so that's it. So those are some different resources about for mental health. If anyone is interested in that, I just know that like not everyone is going to be like running off to the VHA Veterans Health Administration for um, their needs, um, particularly mental health. And so I and I also know like the re I just have dealt with the VHA Veterans Health Administration. I'm still dealing with them. And, you know, it's just cause more stress than it was ever worth is how I feel about it at this point. So I want to show people that there are other options out there in addition to what you may or may not already know about. And these are ones that I think are really commendable that are really out of the box that are really cutting edge. And I really believe that they're basically the blueprint um, and kind of the vision for what I see as the future of behavioral health care for so many people that have previously been without it on any level. And I hope that this level of behavioral health care will make it to where people are more open about mental health treatments and services and be more likely to seek it because you can do so in the privacy of your own home. You can do so without that stigma and the um, pain and problems associated with it. Okay. So that's all I have for today. I think that wraps it up. And I just want to, to know that um, thank you for watching and I wish you all the best. And disclaimer, if you're in crisis, call 911. Um, this does not establish a professional relationship with anyone. If you need a professional service provider of any kind, please find one that's qualified in your area. I wish you the best. Have a great day. Bye.